So um, we've seen that we can run things on the cluster remotely, um, but to start with some motivation, um, I've already logged into the SSH gateway uh, here and we can see that we have Python installed here, but as Niklas told you, you shouldn't be running things actually on this SSH gateway. Uh, you should be running things on the cluster. Um, I will not talk in detail about how you actually submit the jobs. Um, this is done by this command, which we'll discuss uh, in more detail next week. Uh, but I'll shortly demonstrate how we can do it. So with srun, I uh, submit a command that I want to run on the cluster. For example, uh, I want to start an interactive shell session. Um, I have to add this flag for interaction. That's not important. Um, and now you see that the host name changed and I'm on gamma web 08. Um, this, 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 is, this is basically how you submit uh, things. Um, and also here I have Python. I should have Python. I do have Python, uh, but let's say I have a more complex program and my program needs Python 3.10, which we do not have. So we have Python 3.8 and we also don't have very many other uh, things in here. Uh, this is a very, very basic system and you will not be running things directly in here. So what do you do? Let's exit out of this and let's add container image equals Python 3.10 Alpine. Uh, let's do that again, but this time I use sh, not bash. And now it says something like importing Docker image. And that takes a while, but eventually I should get a prompt. Yeah, it looks a bit different. And now we suddenly have Python 3 version 3.10. Okay, so what, what did I do? Well, what I did was not magic. It was actually uh, spawning a Docker container. So what is Docker? Docker uh, fundamentally is basically two things. It's uh, a specification for layered operating system images. So important thing is images and is, it is a container runtime. That's all it is. So with images, I mean, it's a packaged operating system hard disks, pretty much. So um, I have a file that is that represents a virtual hard disk uh, from which I can load an operating system. There's something here about layered, which we'll come to in a minute. And then there is this container runtime, which will actually spawn the virtual operating system. So short bit of history. Originally, this, is, uh, this was proprietary technology by Docker Inc. Uh, but now these two are pretty much standardized and can also be used by uh, other container runtimes. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just call it Docker. What is the difference between what you usually know as a virtual machine and Docker? So with full virtualization, you uh, actually also virtualize the full hardware. So you can run any operating system in it. For example, you have a Linux host and you want to run a Windows operating system and you virtualize the full hardware. That's very flexible, but it's also very slow. Um, Docker does it, uh, does it more lightweight. And uh, we see it here. So for, to the left, you see actual virtual machines where you have the physical hardware, you have the, have the host operating system, and then you have the hypervisor that is your virtual machine, which emulates virtual hardware on which we can use, uh, which we can run one or two guest operating system or any other. And on this, you have libraries and your actual application. So this whole stack is uh, quite complex and also quite slow. Docker cuts down on this by replacing the full hypervisor with a container runtime, which reuses your host operating system. 
So in, in, instead, instead of uh, emulating the hardware, you're using the actual physical hardware of your system, but you're replacing the user space uh, in memory with whatever is loaded from this image. And this way it can be used uh, as a means of sandboxing individual applications since you're running them in a somewhat lightweight container on your system with their own root file system uh, mounted from this image. And it's also quite uh, decent for namespacing deployments. For example, if you have two servers running, which both deploy, um, which both use port 80, uh, it's not possible on one machine, but with containers, it is possible because uh, they only uh, use the port 80 inside the container. Um, as for the images, I said they are layered. And uh, the reason why they're layered is that you start from a base image, which is pre-provided usually. And based from this base image, you build your own um, operating system uh, using these uh, run or copy commands. So basically you only have a Docker file which acts as a recipe for creating your own custom image, which contains all the dependencies that you need. For example, Python 3.10. Uh, um, the advantage of this layered approach is that the individual layers can be quite small. Like you can use a standard Ubuntu base image and simply install a Python version that you need. And this, th this, this base layer is shared uh, among all your images. And this is just one custom image uh, layer that is on top of uh, this Ubuntu base image. And then when you load it at runtime, there's one more layer added down here, which would be layer four in this graphic, um, which is read, write, so you can actually use it like you would use a normal operating system. You can create files and so on. But if you delete the container, all will be gone. So you would start from scratch. And if we go back to this example, this is exactly what we did. So we pulled an image and this is a base image that is already provided. On, on Docker Hub. Uh, you don't have to do anything special. This is just doesn't contain much more than uh, Python 3.10. And so if there's anything, I don't think anything of bash in here. No, I don't have bash. This is just Python. This on its own is not very useful for you, but if you want to build your own application, you have Python 3.10, for example, you can uh, use this as a base image and add your own dependencies in there. And the if we go further, let me see. Eventually, we would push this to a container registry, which is, uh, let me find the slide here. For example, Docker Hub, or we will use GitHub which is a registry where you find these base images. So I'm from Python, it's a base image provided by Docker, um, which you can download in various versions. So how do we build these images? Build these images with a Docker file, which is a recipe with various commands. So we say from Alpine, Alpine is a very minimal Linux distribution. And we run, we say, this is the entry command that is run. So if I go back here and go back to my system here, now a folder where I have two subfolders and in one of these subfolders is this Docker file that we just saw. We 
build this image with Docker build, I give a name and the image uh, Docker file location. So Docker build, Docker name, my image, and my image source there. So that's it. Now with Docker run, I can run an instance of this image, which will do this. So it will spawn a shell and run echo hello world. The Docker run, this RM is for, let's remove this container after it's done. Uh, and my image name, and it says hello world. We have this other Docker file, which will uh, inherit from the HTTPD base image, which is an Apache server. We run a command, which is this. So it will write hello world into this index HTML file in the htdocs file folder of the Apache. And then it will spawn HTTPD in the foreground. I also have this here. I have my server image here. And when I build it, Docker build my server image and then the source directory, my server image source there, it will build it. This takes a bit longer because uh, I didn't pull this image before, so it has to pull it, but now it's done. And I can docker run. My server image. And it will start the server. And now if I start another Chrome window, and go to localhost, it won't, won't do anything right now. Why will it not do anything? Because I actually have to uh, bind the port inside the server to a port on the host system. So let's do that. Port 80 will be bound to 80, 80. Uh, we have this. Yeah, P, actually I named the port, okay. And it's the other way around. P, 80, 80, well, this, this, is, this is the outside, and this is inside the container. And now if, if I run this with just one dash, it will run again. And on localhost per port 80, 80, I will see the server. So uh, this is pretty much what you have to know. So there's in this presentation, which we'll upload, there's a lot more. There's a reference for the Docker run commands. There's a reference how you can attach to a running container. There's reference how you can stop or kill containers and so on. And also the build commands, which but we will not go into detail now because you can read them at your leisure. What you need to understand is that a Docker container is an image and a runtime. And this image can be built by you on your local machine uh, and then shipped to the cluster and executed there using the container runtime. So even, even though you need certain Python packages, you need the NVIDIA library for running with CUDA, for example, on, on the system. All that doesn't have to be provided by us. You can create your own custom images, which is your own PC, basically, which you run inside the container runtime on our cluster. And from there, you can run your own uh, applications. 